Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the news at 9. The headlines. Winter session of parliament begins tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says government is ready to discuss all issues. All India Muslim Personal Law Board to file a review petition against Supreme Court verdict on Ayodhya issue. Home Minister Amit Shah launches special winter grade diesel for high altitude regions of Ladakh. Gotabaya Rajapaksa wins Sri Lankan presidential election. And in tennis, first time finalist Dominic Thiem and Stephanus Sissipas to clash in the ATP finals in London tonight. The winter session of parliament begins tomorrow. The session will have 20 sittings. It will end on the 13th of next month. Ahead of the session, the government today held an all-party meeting in New Delhi to seek support for ensuring smooth functioning of both houses of parliament. Taking part in the meeting, Prime Minister Narendra Modi assured that the government is ready to discuss all issues. Briefing reporters after the meeting, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi said, Mr. Modi affirmed that most important job of the house is to discuss and debate. मान्य प्रधानमंत्री जी ने यह कहा है कि इश्यूज टू बी डिस्कस इन द पार्लियामेंट पार्लियामेंट का प्रमुख काम है डिस्कशन का है और इस स्ट्रक्चर डिबेट से ब्यूरोक्रेसी को एक सतर्कता का महसूस होना चाहिए ऐसा डिबेट होना चाहिए मिस्टर जोशी सेड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स अर्ज पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज टू मेक विंटर सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट प्रोडक्टिव लाइक द लास्ट वन ही सेड मिस्टर मोदी स्टेटेड दैट द कंस्ट्रक्टिव डिस्कशन इन पार्लियामेंट आल्सो कीप द ब्यूरोक्रेसी अलर्ट Mr Joshi said the prime minister also talked about the constitution day to be observed on the 26th of this month late in a series of tweets the prime minister expressed hope that both the houses of parliament will have constructive debates on ways to empower citizens and further india's development he said this time the rajya sabha will mark its 250th session mr modi said he had an extensive meeting with the bjp parliamentary party He said the party will utilize the session to further views on various development and issues and contribute to transforming people's lives. Leader of the opposition the Rajya Sabha and Congress MP Gulam Nabi Azad who attended the all party meeting said detention of Lok Sabha MP Farooq Abdullah was raised by the opposition and demanded that he be allowed to attend the session. Another Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary said the opposition demanded that the issues of economic slowdown job losses and farm distress must be discussed during the session on which subjects should be given priority ranging from unemployment economic crisis to farmers distress members have expressed their concern on the environmental issues the pollution that has been engulfing various states and cities The meeting was attended by senior leaders of several political parties including BJP chief Amit Shah, Derek O'Brien of the TMC and Ram Gopal Yadav of the Samajwadi Party. Rajya Sabha chairman M Venkai Naidu also held a meeting of the leaders of different parties at his residence in Delhi today. Addressing the meeting Mr Naidu requested all political parties to ensure that the positive momentum of the last session of parliament is maintained during the winter session. He informed that various events have been planned to celebrate the landmark 250th session of the Rajya Sabha beginning tomorrow. A meeting of the ruling NDA allies was also held this afternoon in Parliament House. Yesterday Lok Sabha speaker Om Billa had sought cooperation of all political parties to ensure smooth functioning of the house. A correspondent reports that several important issues are likely to be raised during the nearly month long winter session. the situation in jammu and kashmir economic slowdown unemployment and the government's plan to bring the citizenship bill are some of the issues that are likely to figure in the session the government also plans to convert two ordinances into law one ordinance reducing corporate tax rate for new and domestic manufacturing companies the second ordinance ban the sale manufacture and storage of e-cigarettes and similar products the first session was very productive we saw both the houses adopting key legislations such as one to penalize the practice of instant triple talaq and the other giving more powers to the national investigation an agency two houses had also passed resolutions scrapping special status accorded to jammu and kashmir and bifurcating the state into two union territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh sobhagya kar air news delhi on the eve of the winter session of parliament the news services division of all india radio will bring a discussion tonight on issues before parliament and sansad ke samaksh mudde the issues before parliament program can be heard on rajasthani channel from 9:30 pm 
संसद के समक्ष मुद्दे विल बी ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन इंदर प्रस्त एंड एफ एम गोल्ड फ्रॉम नाइन थर्टी पी एम दी ऑल इंडिया मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड ए आई एम पी एल बी विल फाइल अ रिव्यू पिटिशन अगेंस्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट वर्डिक्ट ऑन द अयोध्या इश्यू द डिसीजन वॉज टेकन एट द एग्जीक्यूटिव बॉडी मीटिंग ऑफ द ए आई एम पी एल बी इन लखनऊ टूडे ब्रीफिंग मीडिया आफ्टर द मीटिंग बोर्ड सेक्रेटरी जफर अब जिलानी रेज ऑब्जेक्शन ऑन सेवल पॉइंट इन द एपिक्स कोर्ट जजमेंट एंड सेट द पिटिशन वुड बी फाइल्ड विद इन स्टिपुलेटेड टाइम ऑफ थर्टी डेज आफ्टर द वर्डिक्ट सुनी सेंट्रल वक्फ बोर्ड हेज ऑलरेडी सेड दैट इट वुड नॉट फाइल एनी रिव्यू पिटिशन इन द केस इन अ यूनानिमस डिसीजन अ फाइव जज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच ऑफ द एपिक्स कोर्ट ऑन द नाइन्थ ऑफ दिस मंथ रूल्ड दैट द टू पॉइंट सेवन सेवन एकर्स ऑफ द डिस्प्यूटेड लैंड इन अयोध्या विल रिमेन विद द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड बी हैंडेड ओवर टू अ ट्रस्ट फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अ टेम्पल द बेंच ऑल्सो रूल्ड दैट एन ऑल्टरनेटिव फाइव एकर प्लॉट मस्ट बी फाउंड फॉर अ मॉस्क एट अ प्रोमिनेंट प्लेस इन द टाउन दिस इज ऑल इंडिया रेडियो गिव यू द न्यूज फॉर क्विक न्यूज अपडेट्स विजिट अ न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर ऐप and follow us on twitter at aiar news alerts you can also visit our website www.newsonair.com home minister amit shah today launched a special winter grade diesel developed by indian oil corporation for use in the high altitude regions of ladakh motorists in high altitude sectors like ladakh kargil kaza and kelang face the problem of freezing of diesel in vehicles when winter temperatures drop to as low as minus 30 degrees celsius addressing the people of ladakh through a video conferencing from delhi mr shah said the new union territory status of ladakh will accelerate the pace of holistic development of the region and bring prosperity to the people at par with the rest of the country दोनों यूटी की जनता को आश्वस्त किया था कि आपके विकास की गति और बढ़ेगी आपका विकास और द्रुत गति से आगे बढ़ेगा और सारी आपकी जरूरियातों को संवेदना के साथ समझकर उसका निराकरण लाने का हम प्रयास करेंगे द होम मिनिस्टर से द गवर्नमेंट हैज इनिशिएटेड अ नंबर ऑफ डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट फॉर लद्दाख विद एन एस्टिमेटेड इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करोड़ रूपीज Speaking at the function, Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan said, "People of Ladakh's special winter-grade diesel will further facilitate the local economy as well as tourism in the region." देश में पहली बार विंटर ग्रेड्स की 30 डिग्री की तापमान में भी बिना बर्फ हुए डीजल रहे इसी की आज हमने पवित्र लद्दाख से ही लेह से आज शुरू कर रहे हैं आज के दिन सबके लिए के गौरव के दिन है। In Jammu and Kashmir one army jawan was martyred and two more injured in a suspicious IED blast in Falanwala sector of Akhnoor region today. A defense spokesperson said the blast took place when troops were moving around in an army truck. The injured personnel have been treated at a military hospital. More details are awaited. Information and Broadcasting Minister and Senior BJP leader Prakash Javrekar visited Jharkhand today. He met the party's media team members and gave necessary tips for ongoing assembly elections. He also inaugurated the party media center in Ranchi for the polls. Addressing media, Mr. Javrekar expressed confidence that BJP would return to power in the state with a thumping majority. Sri Lanka's former Defence Secretary Gotabaya Rajapaksa has won the presidential election. He is the brother of former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. Gotabaya got 52.25 percent of the total valid votes. His main rival Sajid Premadasa has conceded defeat and congratulated Gotabaya on his victory. Gotabaya will be sworn in as the new president tomorrow. After his defeat Premadasa resigned from the post of deputy leader of the United National Party led by Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe. Meanwhile Mahinda Rajapaksa has hinted at a change of government following the election results. Our correspondent has filed this report. As the dust of presidential elections settles in Sri Lanka, talks have begun for change in government and holding of parliamentary elections. Mr. Gotabaya's party, led by his brother and former president Mahinda Rajapaksa, had made it clear that they expect PM Ranil Vikram Singhe to step down in the event of Mr. Gotabaya's victory. Several ministers of Vikram Singhe government, allied with Gotabaya's rival Sajid Premadasa, have already resigned. But PM Vikram Singhe has not hinted of resigning. Instead, he issued a statement saying general elections will be decided after discussion with his speaker and government MPs. It has to be seen what decision new president takes after his swearing in tomorrow. Santosh Kumar for AIR News from Colombo. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Gotabaya Rajapaksa on victory in the presidential elections. NCP President Sharad Pawar will meet Congress President Sonia Gandhi and other senior Congress leaders in New Delhi tomorrow. 
The leaders are expected to discuss various possibilities of government formation in Maharashtra. Sharad Pawar held a meeting with senior leaders of his party at his residence in Pune this evening. The leaders unanimously expressed that the president's rule should end in Maharashtra and an alternate government should be formed. Speaking to reporters, party spokesperson Nawab Malik said the next decision will be taken only after discussion with the Congress. And now news from the world of cinema. Real life has been depicted on screen in many forms. New wave of Indian cinema is one of them. The Golden Jubilee of International Film Festival of India, IFI in Goa, is recalling the great filmmakers of this genre. Beginning on the 20th of this month, IFI has curated a special section on the retrospective of new wave in Indian cinema. Here is a sneak peek into this section. The decade of the late 1950s to the late 1970s saw a new breed of filmmakers charting a new territory. Pranal Sen, Mani Kaul, Kumar Shahani, Sham Benegal and Adur Gopalakrishnan were the proponents. The narrative, style and budget was different compared to the mainstream Bollywood. Twelve films of this genre will be screened under the India's new wave cinema retrospective in Goa. It opens with Ritwik Ghatak's Bangla film, Ajantrik and Meghe Dhaka Tara. Rinald Sain's Hindi movie, Bhuvan Shom, released in 1969, is the story of a lonely widower and strict disciplinarian and how a journey changes him. Damu Patel. 1977 Tamil movie Agra Harathil directed by John Abraham, is another eye opener. It tells a story of what ensues when a donkey strays into a village dominated by upper caste Brahmins. Sham Benegal's Bhumika and Ankur, Mani calls Uski Roti, and Adur Gopalakrishnan's Swam Varam are among other movies to be screened at a fee in this section. <laughs> The films from the new wave in Indian cinema blurred the boundaries between the documentary and fiction. No wonder Pranal Sain once termed them as the signature of the filmmaker. This retrospective, in a way, is an ode to the craft of these Indian filmmakers. Stay tuned for more such updates with us, Ifi Desk, AIR News. In Uttarakhand, the portals of Badrinath Shrine were closed today for the winter season amid chants and hymns. The shrine was decorated with flowers for the closing ceremony, which was witnessed by a large number of devotees from the country and abroad. The palanquin of idols will leave for Narsim Temple early tomorrow. Badrinath is the last shrine of the Chardham Shrines in Uttarakhand to close for the winters after Gangotri, Yamnotri and Kedarnath. In tennis, first-time finalist Dominic Thiem and Stefanos Sissipas will meet in the summit clash of the ATP finals in London tonight. Australian fifth seed Thiem defeated defending champion Alexander Zverev in the men's single semi-finals yesterday. In the other semi-final, Greek sixth seed Sissipas beat six-time champion Roger Federer. The ATP finals will have a first-time champion for the fourth year in a row. Indian women clinched five gold while two men bagged silver at the Asian Youth Boxing Championship in Mongolia today. Norim Chanu, 51 kg, Vinka, 64 kg, Sun Macha Chanu, 75 kg, Punam, 54 kg and Sushma, 81 kg, won gold for the country in a phenomenal sweep. India signed off with 12 medals in the event with a bronze coming from Arunduthi Chaudhary. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Winter session of parliament begins tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says government is ready to discuss all issues. All India Muslim Personal Law Board to file a review petition against Supreme Court verdict on Ayodhya issue. Home Minister Amit Shah launches special winter grade diesel for high altitude regions of Ladakh. Gotabaya Rajapaksa wins Sri Lankan presidential election. And in tennis, first time finalists Dominic Thiem and Stefanos Sissi pass to clash in the ATP finals in London tonight. And that is all in the news at 9. Good night.